But still 13 with Hornets chairman Mark Wynn after Monday's game marked the midpoint of the first phase of the season, if you will. Um, what are your overall thought, thoughts so far on how the season's gone? Well, we, we set off like a house on fire, didn't we? And we had some, some cracking results. They pretty much a demolishing of Dewsbury. Uh, and a way win at Bradford, which even you know in my own lifetime I've never witnessed. Um, and a real good performance against Hull KR. Since then we've stuttered a little bit. Um, but obviously we had a fabulous w away win at um, Featherston. We, we had a draw um, w with Oldham and, you know, it was probably a point dropped, really, against our local rivals. We've, we've had a couple of slips and a couple of really narrow losses. So, overall, if, if, if you know, when looking back in hindsight, if you will, if we'd have said we'd have been at this point in the season by now, we'd have been happy. But that incredible start that we had has, has obviously lifted everybody's aspirations and hopes. Yeah, and as you mentioned, we, were, we, we did get off to that flying start and we have fallen away. Sort of, in your opinion, how, how do we do we get back to winning ways and start to come over the overcome the sort of adversity that we're facing? Well, I think um, the the thing that got us the flying start was hard work, and I think that's the secret. You know, this you know it's almost not a secret; it's just hard work. The lads and the coaching staff and, and, and us behind the scenes have to carry on doing what we're doing, do it well, and the wins will start to come again. Um, th there's been some issues that we need to address, and obviously injuries start to play a part as well. But over, overall, I'm, I'm really happy with how the team is progressing, how the coaching staff are doing, going about their work, and we will get back on track, I'm convinced of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one issue that's, that's crept in it is we, we have sort of, Fallen away, and, and supporters and other people have been quite vocal about this. Is is the the team's discipline? Um, it's it's frustrating more than anything because we we know we're not a dirty team and we're not that kind of team. What what are your thoughts on on it? The 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 discipline issue. If you just look at it as a black uh, just a black and white issue of of a penalty count, and you, you we've we've lost every penalty count, or pretty much all we had been losing every penalty count. And um, we asked for statistics off the RFL and we were the most penalised team in the league. Now, you can look at that two ways. Is One, we need to improve our discipline and we, we're not trying to shy away from that. Um, but I'll give you the example of the Batley game. After that, which was a two-point loss, we, we, looked, we, were heavily, uh, we heavily lost the penalty count. But when, we, when the coaching staff uh, went back through the tapes... They highlighted 14 decisions made by the referee, which went against Hornets. Either a penalty wasn't given our way, or we were penalised. Of those 14 decisions we highlighted as being incorrect, the, the uh, RFL's referee coach, Steve Presley, agreed with 12. The, the biggest factor was the sim binning of, of Matty Haddon, which he agreed wasn't a sim binning. And like, literally, when you lose a game by two points and Matty's off the field, then things... Um, rub salt in the wounds if you will but we can't we as a club we can't say the ref got it wrong that day and we, we've we've really hammered home to our team and as a players and as coaching staff and the directors as well that we discipline starts at the top so myself as the chairman i have to be ultra disciplined and the coaching staff and that permeates right through the club the last two games we've actually won the penalty count but the Jordan hand sin binning was wrong. The, the referees, coaches have now admitted that was a wrong decision. We conceded 12 points with Jordan off the pitch and we lost the game by one point. Then things are really difficult for any, for any coach um, to get his head around. And to, um, how, do you, how do you coach that out of a team, a referee's mistakes? Well, we can't. So what we've got to do is make sure we score that many points. The referee's decisions are irrelevant. And what you know, we have to highlight the fact again. We've had six sin binnings away from home, each sin binning on, refer on re referral to the RFL coach has been a wrong decision. Now that can't be right. Now obviously, it doesn't give us any comfort that the referee after the battle game was dropped for the entire Easter period, As, and it's almost an admission that he, he had a particularly bad game. But when you're on the receiving end, it's called comfort because you've lost. And we we have you know we we need to help the referees better and so we as a club need to support the game and the referee uh, coaching better the, the fact is some players seem to rub referees up the wrong way Joe Tyera has been sin binned each time we've had a particular ref that can't be right 
And each time, Joe's been found not guilty and it's been a bad decision. So we've got to find out what is it that Joe's doing to make that referee want to sin him all the time. So we as a club have to work hard. But like I've said, we need to then go with the mentality, if we score that many points, it's irrelevant what the referee decides. And that, that's, that's a difficult thing to do in, in this competition. We, you've got to set your style out to score so many points to create that buffer between human error from the referee and, and winning a game. Uh, that, that must be frustrating for, for it, you It is, German. it is. And, and what you've got to do is, is one thing you can't affect as the chairman, if you will, is, is, a, is a, a, one of the boys drops a pass, puts a bad pass in, misses a tackle. So we've got to look at it in the round. That we've, We're speaking about that, but we need almost to, to put that on the back burner and concentrate on the things we can affect. Now, we have obviously spoken a lot with the RFL about the, the situation with our penalty counts. And, like I said, the last two games, since we had a major com uh, conversation with them, it has improved. So we're, we're happy with the, that result. But we can only influence the things we can influence. So we've got to make sure our guys are in the best physical condition, which they absolutely are, with the best facilities, the best backup, the, the best medical uh, setup, the best coaching setup, and all the things that we can do to support the lads on the field on the Sunday afternoons to win games. And as it is, we are doing, and that the results will start to come again. Absolutely. And so let's set focus off the field now. Um, sort of a broad statement, but how are things looking? Well, we're not doing so bad. No, we're not doing so bad. We, um, we were hoping to have a members meeting, certainly by, by April, but our accounts, the books haven't been signed off yet by the accountant, so that... We wanted to do that as an AGM and it, we wanted to, again, a little bit of good news for the club that we got promoted last year, we went up as champions, first time in 97 years, and we actually made a profit last year. So for any rugby league club to be able to say, you know what, we, we, we're the champion, no, you know, it's almost unheard of that somebody makes money and becomes champion. So we, we're proud that we've done that. So we will be announcing some members meeting. It's frustrating that we haven't got, got the books all signed off and that comes partly because we've changed CEO, so there's a lot of stuff around the accountancy stuff. You know, the, the club's in a good place. The club's in a good place. This morning I've been to um, a keep fit thing that we, we, we run um, with a, a chap called Chris Honor over at Pure Gym at Rochdale. We're doing this interview at Kingsway Park High School where Rochdale on its wheelchair rugby league team is, is, is making its debut in the league against Mersey Storm. So that we're doing a lot of great stuff. We've got um, a Masters team that's going to be starting soon with, with Chris Germ and, and Emin Ratu uh, sort of heading up on that. We're a bit frustrated. We, the, the progress we, that we had made with the ladies seems to have stalled and we're in a bit of a... Um, we're going to have to reassess how we progress that if we can. And just while we're on, I just want to say, you know, get well soon to uh, Caroline Lepaka, who, uh, one of the Hornets ladies who was involved in a road traffic accident at Hotwood Hall College. Um, you know, get well soon, Caroline. And, we, you know, we, we'll keep reassessing the things that we're doing off the field. What I, and, you know, in terms of... In, off the field in its broadest sense, the support we've had this year off fans has been absolutely fantastic. Everybody's commented on it. The way support, in particular, has got us home at Featherstone. You could argue we need to possibly be a bit more vocal as, as supporters because it, it, it's an obvious thing that decisions can be influenced by the crowd, so we need to probably be a bit more vocal. And also, nipping in the bud some negativity. We've lost a couple of games and we've lost them by a narrow margin. It, you know, you you, know, you see, you can see players who are possibly mentally weak. You can see supporters who can be a bit um, easily influenced. And you know, at the weekend I picked up a comment. Somebody shouted at Killer, sort the dis discipline out, Killshaw, when Jordan Andrews sinned, which was a decision that was wrong. It was a clash of heads, and the referee reacted to to crowd noise. So let's be positive. Let's be let's work hard, and we'll, and we'll the rewards will come. And, you know, we're in a good place. We're in a good place. And something that supporters will be looking forward to is the Summer Bash that's coming up next month. Um, the first one the club's been involved with. Obviously, there'll be the presence on Sky Sports. Are you, are you looking forward to that? No, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, um, it, had, it genuinely has a feel of a cup final. And, and, it, and basically, it's just another, it's just another round of the, of the competition, isn't it? But to be playing our... our Biggest rivals, our longest rivals, at a neutral venue, takes you back, doesn't it, to 2013 and, and probably one of the greatest moments in the club's modern history. So for me, I'm really looking forward to it. I know our season, uh, our 
season ticket sales, sorry, our ticket sales have gone really well for Summer Bash. We need more support there. It will be fantastic. We genuinely, you know, the lads are excited by it. Myself as, as, as the chairman, but as a fan, I'm excited by it. I want to be there. I want to watch that game. I want us to see us perform on what will be a national stage and obviously, you know, the, the match will be broadcast internationally. So the Rochdale Hornets brand will be out there. And I'm sure the lads will, will put on a, a fantastic show for the supporters. Yeah, and on a final note, um, what are your what are your hopes for the for the rest of the season as we as we move into the the second half of the first phase of the season <laughs> before we hit the the eights and things like that? Well, obviously to to find the the form that we had at the start of the season to to be a winning game, and and I think what was important in them in, in them wins and in the performances that we did, we played good rugby. It wasn't up the middle stuff. We we we've got some fantastic players, you know. Rob Massam's been a revelation at this level, you know. So, uh, Gav Benyon, you know these players who who some of our sports may not have really be, have heard of, but they are fantastic players. And the the rest of the lads, we've got some cracking players. Gary Middlehurst is his involvement in a game is astronomical in terms of defence and attack. You know, they're, they're, we've got a cracking team and we've assembled a cracking team and it is on, in reality, a shoestring budget mm. and probably the lowest in the league. But everybody, even though we've lost a few, everybody fears us and that's not a bad place to be. And my, and my hope and aspiration is that we don't just, we don't want to just, you know, the, to talk is don't, to avoid relegation. It's more than that. It's to be absolutely the best we can be. And the Rochdale Hornets, when people look at Rochdale Hornets, the, they know they're in for a game. They'll be in for a tough time, and if they want the two points, they're going to have to come and fight for them. And that—that—that's all we can ask for, as, a, as in effect, as supporters and fans, uh, and everybody else behind the scenes. And that's—that's that's all we'll—we will achieve that. We will achieve that.